Um, all right, here we go. Advice for, for a daft Scotsman. Hey there, you redheaded cunt. <laughs> oh, I cannot fucking wait to go back to Scotland, Ireland, and all these fucking places. These miserable cunts are some of the funniest people you're ever going to meet. All right, he says, I'm 26-year-old guy from near Glasgow, Scotland. Um, for quite a while, I was in a bit of a rut, but eventually I managed to pick myself out of it and decided to do something that I've always wanted to do. I took a big step and decided to buy a ticket to a festival in Chicago. Oh, that's the shit. I love Chicago. He said, I booked my flights and I'll be in the city for a week. That's tremendous. He said, basically, my question is, as I'll be traveling alone and will be staying alone, how easy is it to just hang around and strike up conversations with complete strangers in a different country? Have you ever found difficulties in finding common ground in conversation with people from different countries? Also, any faux pas I should avoid when talking to Americans so I can prevent getting my cunt kicked in. All the best, you fat-shaming prick. Um, all right, there's a lot of questions there. Um, well, the only time I ever traveled is when I, I, I'm doing stand-up. And then after the show, there's always people that just saw you do a show, so I've already broken the ice. But um, first things first, why don't I tell you a couple places to go to from my little fucking places to go thing that I have in my fucking phone that my wife used to make fun of. She made fun of places to go, and she was laughing. And then you know what? We went to one of those fucking places, and then all of a sudden... You know, she's just, she has total faith in it. Now she tells me, hit it. All right, here's what I would go. All right? If you like a nice fucking, a great fucking bar for music and that type of thing, I'd go to the Liars Club. Um, if you like cigars, there's a place, Big Cigar Emporium. Check that fucking place out. And then as far as food and all that shit, I would just tweet about it because uh, I'm not a big fan of, of, of deep dish pizza. You know what I mean? I just don't understand it. I don't understand deep dish pizza the way I don't understand why, why coffee and tea have to be so fucking hot. You know what I mean? I, I, what, so it gets the, the, the fucking the tea bag all in the water maybe? Is that what the fuck it is? I just don't understand. But you have to wait like an hour before you can drink it without scalding your fucking mouth. And when it comes to deep dish pizza, it's, it's, just, it's just too fucking much. You know, and you can't just get a slice of it. They bring the fucking thing over. It's it's like, hey, you want some lasagna? Yeah, but not a whole fucking tray, you know? Um, but you should definitely try it. If you get one that actually has a really good crust, it, it is pretty amazing, but it's just like, I mean, you can literally split one piece with somebody else. It's so fucking big. And uh, my wife said the funniest shit about it. She called it an abomination. She goes, it's the ultimate expression of American gluttony. She goes, go to Italy. You won't see anything, anything over there like it. <laughs> and it's true. When we went to Italy, you know, they have like we have all our American versions of their dishes. You know what I mean? But there's no deep dip, deep, deep dish pizza in Italy, at least not in any place we went to in Rome. That's the only place I've been to. But you don't see it. Um, that's what she said. And she goes, you know why? Because it's an abomination. Um, so anyways, uh, as far as I found in that, that Liars Club, uh, people were fucking cool as hell. If you're into the music and shit, it's a good time. But dude, you're going to be coming over with your fucking accent. I wouldn't go to the fucking, you know, I, you know, depends on what you're into. I would go to uh, uh, a place where there's going to be a bunch of beautiful women. That's what I would do. And then you go over there. And you just fucking just just start talking. And I think you'll be in the fucking game. And they'll be, who'd you come over here with? Be like, oh, I came over by myself. I want, always wanted to come to Chicago. And just literally, you know, hey, DJ, what, do you, what do you fucking birds do? Whatever the fuck, however the fuck you guys talk, right? What the fuck you fucking do over here for fun? You skirt wearing cunt, right? Whatever the fuck you're going to say. And they're going to love it. They're going to love it. Even if you ask them, hey, for a fucking shag, any, however the fuck you say fucking in your country, it's going to seem so cool to them and so different. And then also they're going to be more adventurous because, you know, you're, the story's leaving with you when you go back, when you fly back to Scotland. Um, how can you avoid getting your head kicked in? 
Um, don't do what everybody else from other countries do, is you come here and you criticize the United States and talk about how dumb we are, how fat we are, how awful the foreign policy is, how uh, our football players are pussies because they wear pads. Why do you call it football? All of that dumb shit. You know what I mean? It's so fucking obnoxious. You know, you know why it's obnoxious? Because they, those kinds of people always come here and they act like these, they're these worldly traveled people. You know, and oh, I come from here and I come from there and we can do this and we can do that. And it's just like, well, in all of that fucking travel, you never learn to be on your best behavior when you come to somebody's country and you don't come in and insult it. So you make your whole country look like a bunch of fucking snobby cunts. You, you never learned that one. I am always, I'm on my best fucking behavior when I go to a different country. I'm not saying I don't go out and get fucking hammered, but like, I don't go there and shit on it, you know? Some of these places I go to, I'm fucking talking to people. I know this place is nice. They're always like, why the fuck did you come here? <laughs> Remember, I was, like in, I was in Oslo, Norway. I said, I'm, you know, I'm going to be... You guys, well, thanks a lot. You guys have been great. I'll definitely be back. And somebody yelled out, why? It just struck. I was like, what? What do you mean, why? Why the fuck wouldn't I? It's fucking beautiful. I, I don't know. Anyway, so I would avoid doing that. Um, and then just everything else is common sense. You know, somebody's, you know, looking like a psycho, just fucking leave him alone. But I don't know, dude. I, I mean, I judge a lot of Scotland on that movie Train Spotting. where I just feel like it, I, I don't go into any bars where there's an upper deck to it because I just feel like there's going to be that guy up there that's going to finish his fucking pint and just throw the glass over his head, cut open some woman's face. Like, I just, you know. If it's even remotely like that over there, I think you're going to be fine in Chicago. Um, I would definitely try to go to a Cubs game. Uh, no offense to White Sox fans, but you, know, you, you guys all know that your fucking stadium stinks. You know it stinks. It's the only time I ever saw a stadium, a new stadium built, and they admitted so quickly, like, wow, we really fucked this up. Let's try to, like, it was like a botched nose job. You know what I mean? Like, your stadium is, is the fucking stadium version of, like, you know when some Hollywood chick or somebody... They get too much work done on their face and people, oh, my God, what happened? That's what you did with that stadium. They're like, well, well, let's wait till it settles. Let's see what happens. You know? All right. So there you go. But, dude, you picked a great fucking city to go to. Chicago is the shit. And you picked a great time of the year to go there. Um, I will tell you the traffic is fucking horrific. So just get ready for that. But once you're in it, it's fucking phenomenal.